Now, Didi, yeah. you mentioned something that I was going to jump to. You beat me to it, and that's to this day with uh -oh. your grandchildren. You have five of them, if I remember correctly. Uh, you will yes. not leave them out of your sight. You will not leave them in the car if you go anywhere. No. You'll take them with you if you get out. Oh, yes. No, we just we just avoid that. We either all go in store together or I make sure I have gas before I pick them up because I'm, I'm, I don't do gas with the kids. No, not with not without an adult to sit with them. No, that just doesn't happen. Now, have you been back to that area of Lafayette since this happened? Or I guess the better question is, when did you move to the Baton Rouge area? Because I know you're not here anymore. When did you leave Lafayette and go to well, Baton Rouge? I, we, we, left, we left Lafayette not long after we filmed Rescue 911. Um, and that was just my husband was changing jobs and, and Baton Rouge was home. We were only in Lafayette for his work. And... We moved back to Baton Rouge, but we still have friends in Lafayette. And in fact, it was uh, it was a little girl my son's age that lived next door to us at the time this happened. Uh, of course, all grown up with kids of her own now, but she was the one that saw it, saw that you had done the the story and sent it to me. And I was just I was really excited when I saw it. Wow. How often do you get a chance to come back? And when you do, do you ever pass by where it happened? No. Um, we we lived behind Evangeline Downs. Um, and I don't think I ever just turned down the throughway and, and drove that way after we did the filming. In fact, they wouldn't even let us film at the, the station that it actually happened. Uh, we had to use another gas station, but I I do know that that station has been long gone, that it's not even there anymore. Yeah, that entire part of the, the city has changed since then. And the one thing that imagine. is constant, though, is this message about keeping an eye on your kids, about making sure that something like this, that your situation Absolutely. happens to nobody else, uh, for those who Absolutely. are listening, they may not have seen the video yet and are hearing this for the first time. What advice do you have for them to make sure this doesn't happen again? Oh, the, the kids are just not meant to wait in the car. You, if, if you're going in a store, you can just as easily take them out and bring them in with you. And, and Or like I said, I do with the gas. I make sure I've filled up with gas before I pick the kids up. So that I don't have them in the vehicle when I need to do that. It's just it. It's too easy, and and like Missy said, you you cannot, and and we don't have the attitude. Well, that'll never happen to me, because I know now that it can. So, I have stood outside stores and waited for mom or dad to come out, and just kept an eye on a car with kids in it, and told them, please don't do this. Please, just don't do it. And especially now, I mean, with, with you know, with car theft the way it is and, and muggings and it's just, you, you really can't do it now. And I mean, Lafayette at the time this happened was considered a fairly safe place. You know, we had never had any issues when we lived in Lafayette. No, no crime whatsoever. And you just, you never know. This this guy was, was hitchhiking and got dropped off where he knew it would be convenient to steal a car and jump right back on the interstate. So you just, you never know. You're not safe anywhere. One of the other big surprises in doing this story is the reaction that we got from family members of the Wyatts themselves. Some of their grandchildren saw the story, began sharing it and wow. reminiscing about their grandparents. In fact, I think one of the wise oh, wow. daughters posted that they were happy the video surfaced because they got to see and hear their mom's voice again. Oh. Yeah, awesome. I saw one of them, they commented and saying they remember that day um, the Wyatts were supposed to be at their house for a get-together and they were late. Right, and right. 
she said, um, she said, I don't really remember everything, but I remember my mom saying we found a baby <laughs> and that was yeah. their reason for being late going there. And yeah, when she were. shared the story, I just, all I could, I mean, there's really no words, <laughs> you know, you can't, there's no perfect words to, to thank them, but yeah. I just said, they're my heroes. Oh man. They, yeah, they, it was Father's Day and they were headed to their son's house, they said, for homemade ice cream. And when they passed this particular curve in the road, she saw a guy walking from the ditch to the car and closed the door real quick and sped off. And she said the further her husband drove, the more it kept pulling at her that something was not right. And she told him uh, to turn around and go back. She said something's not right. And when they turned around and drove back toward that same curve in the road, she had rolled the window down to try and look because you could not see down into the ditch, but she heard her crying. And that's when they pulled over and Mr. White climbed down in the ditch and got Missy. She was still strapped in her car seat face down in the ditch. And which by the time the police took us back to show us where she had been found, it had started raining. So I feel like she she definitely would have drowned. And Missy loved apple juice. And I had a couple of bottles of apple juice in her diaper bag that he had thrown out with her. And the diaper bag was a good way away from her. And it was attracting all the ants in the ditch away from her. So I kind of feel like that was the hand of God there keeping all the ants away from her. Otherwise, she'd have been eaten up by the ants. So we we really we really owe it all to the Wyatt. That's for sure. I'm sure at some point the Wyatt family will hear this. Uh, they'll either hear this on the air or see it on the web. Do you have a, a message for them? Is there anything you'd like to say to their relatives who are still around? Oh, I would I would love just to get in touch with them again. Um uh, they can they can find me. I'm on Facebook, Missy's on Facebook. Um like I said, we I kept in touch with Miss Thelma uh until we lost her and I I still have the picture of, of Missy with them if if they would be interested in a copy of that. But and Miss Thelma's face would just light up when she saw Missy. I'd take her to visit and she would just light up when I saw her. So she was uh, she was a real special lady. A nosy lady, as my son called her, but yeah, that nosy lady found our missing baby. So we we love Miss Wyatt. And that missing baby is now a mother of two, successful uh a hair salon and spa manager, yes. uh, which, uh, as we record this, Missy, you're on your lunch break right now, so I appreciate you taking the time. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> Anything <laughs> is not a Anything problem to, at all. Anything to further our cause, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, and uh, it is a worthy cause and, uh, and an an excellent story, uh, a, a harrowing story, but still a, a fantastic story all these years later. Dee Dee Gulledge, Missy Gulledge joining us on Acadiana's Morning News. Ladies, thank you again. We appreciate the time. Thank you for letting us tell your story, and we'll work on getting you oh, reconnected. You. If we can get you reconnected with the Wyatt family, we'll uh, do that, and we'll keep you posted. Love to do that. Thank you for thank telling you so the story. Much. Thank you.